Hello, good morning. You're listening to BBC Radio Career. This is Mike Zeller at breakfast. It's 8 o'clock. It's Monday the 9th of November and the news this morning is read by Heather Wainwright. Cumbrian businesses are being told they could secure £2 billion worth of trade a year with South Asia over the next 10 years. A government body says it would be achievable if companies tap into markets, including China. Some Cumbrian companies already export to China, among them Kendall NutriCare, which produces milk powder. It's just developed a new product following four years of research. And the owner and chairman, Ross McMahon, who's in China at the moment, says its roots here in the Lake District help to secure the contracts. To stand out in this market, it's all down to our quality. The provenance from Britain, the provenance from the Lake District, our experienced management team of over 25 years in Kendall. Mike Zeller at breakfast on BBC Radio Cumbria. Hello, good morning. It's five past eight. Exports from Cumbria to countries like China, India and Japan could be worth up to £2 billion a year over the next decade. That's according to the government body whose job it is to encourage more overseas trade. One company whose board members are currently in China looking for business is Kendall NutriCare, which used to be known as the Heinz Baby Food Factory. BBC Radio Cumbria's reporter Martin Lewis is live for us there this morning. Morning to you, Martin. Morning, Mike. If you're a customer coming here to Kendall NutriCare, Heinz Baby Food as, as was, as you say, this is pr- presumably the first place you come to. I'm with John Whitaker, the factory manager. Morning, John. Good morning, Martin. Presum- it is, yes. It is. So, presumably, um, you're sort of settling down now after that change, which was early this year, wasn't it, when you suddenly went from being part of a huge multinational company to being a small firm of, what, 90, 100 people? That's correct, Martin. It was in the uh, beginning of June when uh, uh, Ross McMahon took over the company from Heinz. At that stage, we were uh, a massive global company. I used to see my boss perhaps once every six months, where now my boss sits in the next office to me. So yeah, really big changes have have occurred over this last five months. Has it made much difference to doing business in places like China? Presumably that was all done for you when you worked for Heinz. You just got a piece of paper, came over the email or whatever, saying, please supply. It was. We were a factory that just manufactured, and all the central operations like sales and marketing were in central functions in Heinz, whereas now it's it's at site, and that's why our owner at the moment is over in China. We, we now see customers uh, on a weekly basis at the factory, whereas once over because we're branded products, we didn't see that. So now we're kind of being audited every week by customers that are coming to site. I, I did this gesture when, I, when, I, when we were talking about this earlier, where I ran my finger along the mantelpiece and looked at it. They do that sort of thing, don't they? We have a lot of that. <laughs> yes, we do, yes. Because, of course, it's baby food. You have to get it right. You cannot afford a, you cannot afford a, a, a stray microbe in there, can you? No, we can't. We take a lot of time and a lot of energy, and a lot of our workforce are actually in the quality assurance department on site, making sure that our products are, uh, are very safe to use. Is that more so or different if you're dealing with China to if you're dealing with, say, I don't know, Belgium? somewhere i don't think it, it isn't particularly but there are different legislation and restrictions in dealing with china but infant product wherever you're selling it needs to be safe at the end of the day so we do take a lot of time and care to make sure that happens but yes it is it is different we had to get registered with china which took us some uh, four months people come to site they spent five days old and obviously there's a language and culture differences and they're not on your doorstep uh, as you're well aware so the geography of dealing with china is uh, is very different you're organizing a ship rather than a a, 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 a big articulated truck i, I, I just thought the mutton the, isn't the food different because i mean that surely i mean we we, we eat Chinese food because it's so different from what we used to hear in the UK. We do have different recipes for different uh, areas of the world. So there's a European recipe that we do and there is a Chinese recipe. So they, are, they do vary slightly different to obviously cater for, for the population in that country. So your owner, Ross McMahon, is over there drumming up business. If he drums up more business, will he be having more jobs? I sincerely hope so. We've actually increased up from uh, 92 to about 108 already and we still have some vacancies. So anyone out there who wants to Korea, please look at Kendall NutriCare as being someone who can offer you that. So when UK Trade and Investment says, you know, selling in China can bring money and jobs back here to Cumbria, they're right. They are right, yes. Most of our work is hopefully going to be in that region going forward, so any help that UKTR can give us is much appreciated. And to come back to the beginning of the loop, here you are. You're not a big multinational doing this. You're a little firm, 100-odd people, and you're flying out to China and getting work out there. I mean, that says it can be done, doesn't it? It does, yes. There we are, John Whittaker from Kendall Nutricare, factory manager. Thank you very much.